Hi, I'm Lena. And I'm Kiara. And you're listening to Take It To Go, a one-stop shop podcast about all things life, love, and LOL worthy. Today we are talking about our trip to Vegas to see the cats win in the Las yes. Vegas Bowl. Have you missed us? Because we have been busy. We've been we busy have. out in New York, in Nashville, and actually in Vegas, which was the most fun. Like it, we were there for three four nights. Days. Yeah, four, day, four day nights. And gosh, we capped it off with an outstanding win for the Northwestern. I mean, you guys can go back and look at the receipts. I was very judgmental about this team. I made a joke about Northwestern having one win at the beginning of the year, and we have eight. Yes. They really did turn around the season, especially from last year with, again, another 1-11 record. So, it was brutal. It yeah. was brutal. But like – was. Round of applause. Kudos to everybody on that team, on the coaching staff. I'm so proud of you. A lot of people took their end off. You know, Northwestern like to say the end never comes off. My end never came off. A lot of people jumped ship. But even in amidst my snark and my cynicism, I was there in the end supporting no, the team. I have to say, Kiara was the one who stood by Northwestern. There were times where I didn't even catch games and she was updating me on play by play what was going on, you know, who won, who made what catch, who made what tackle. So she really stood by the program this year. She was even better than I was and was a true fan and deserved every minute of time spent on that TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's true lena you were busy watching colorado and i'm there trying to i was keep you updated on the cats <laughs> and you know honestly and this is a topic we also have to bring to light is that everybody was looking at these 111 programs right colorado last season had a terrible record one win 11 losses our team same thing one win 11 losses we didn't even win on american soil go figure and uh I was busy with Colorado, thinking, believing, seeing the Dion effect. And of course, I still love myself some Dion. I still Sanders. believe in, in Coach Prime. Of course, of course. I mean, he's done so much and he really did do a great job with the program. And I'm so excited to see where they end up next season. But I didn't mm. give as much credit, neither did you, but I definitely didn't give as much credit to Northwestern as they were progressing through their season, even when they had six wins, seven wins, I was still like, oh, okay, like we didn't do anything to celebrate the fact that a program that we came from, a program that we do love so dearly, was actually one of the change makers. And this is all, not all, but a big factor was Coach Braun. He came in unknown, underrepresented, very silent in the media, won Big Ten Coach of the Year, and just kind of flew with it you know now he's actually the head coach of Northwestern had no, not secured that position initially he was just supposed to be a stand-in until they found one but they believed in what he did with the team this season so I guess now we have to apologize to him for overlooking <laughs> overlooking him overlooking the program and seeing well, he gave us a story to believe in just as much as coach prime did Coach Braun is not just a pretty face. He is also a decent head coach as well. I will give him credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of changes that happened, though, prior to and especially after the bowl game. So Kiara and I will get into that as well. But first, tell us about your experience, Kiara, at Vegas. Why did you want to go? I knew – so as soon as Northwestern started, I guess, tiptoeing towards bowl eligibility, I was like on hail to purple.com or .org or whatever it is. Like I was looking up the bowl statistics. I was looking at tie-ins. and I just wanted to go to a bowl game to support the team and also to get a vacation. And I knew that if it was Detroit – absolutely not. I was not going to Detroit. If it was New York, like obviously I'd go because I live in New York, but I wanted something exciting. I wanted to see Lena again. Like I don't know if you guys know this. No, I definitely know you guys don't know this, but me and Lena, I graduated from Northwestern in 2019 and had not seen Lena since like December 2019. Yeah. Up until like last week. So last it week. had been 
so long and I wanted just like a fun opportunity to support the cats go see Lena I was supposed to see her earlier this year in Nashville and that fell through so I just thought it would be really fun a really good time and it was Yes, I'm so glad that you brought it to me because I never thought about going anywhere. I was very much like anti, not anti-travel, but I always just felt like I couldn't do it. And at this point in my life and with training and all of that. So when Kiara proposed it, like, thank you so much because it was such a fun trip. It had literally been four years since I've seen you in person. We're doing a podcast together. We talk to each other all the time. So it was such a great moment to be able to just reconnect and and be there with each other and have finally some experiences together, some pictures together. Yes. And it was so fun because we actually got a national television together as well. We did. I mean, like literally my phone was blowing up throughout the game like do you guys realize you're on tv because we were it wasn't i mean yes we are exceptionally beautiful and the camera loves us but <laughs> other than that it wasn't for us it wasn't for it us. was it was not for us we got tickets from a player shout out owen bergen thank you so much i've never thank met you, you in person but thank you owen truly for the tickets they were amazing and they just put us right behind ben bryan's family Yep. And Ben Bryan is the quarterback for Northwestern, for those of you who don't know. He was a very, very, very big factor in our team doing so well this season. That boy has an arm, first of all, could throw a very beautiful pass. Yes. And was just a great leader for the team this season. And I think he's somebody that we definitely needed on our offense to really pick up the morale, get the guys moving, get them making great plays. And you saw a lot of that in the bowl game as well against Utah. Yeah, unfortunately, at some point during the game, actually at a couple different points throughout the game, he got hurt, which is why they kept putting the camera on us. But they also did put the camera on us who were like right behind his family after a touchdown pass. So it wasn't all bad. But I do know uh, after getting home and looking at like Reddit and Twitter, a lot of people were not happy about the fact that they just kept putting the camera on his family. And I understand, like, it is kind of tacky to do that. Like, there was a point, we obviously, we saw in person, Lena, and I watched the game back when I got home. I don't know if you saw this, but we saw his, Ben Bryant's mother, try to speak to security to go talk and see if her son is okay. And the camera was following her as she did that. They actually got that, aired that on ESPN. Yeah, it was not very classy, I think, of, of the NCAA, um, of the Big Ten. Well, I, was that the Big Ten work? Probably not. I don't know. But whoever yeah, it was, was ESPN, yeah. ESPN, ESPN, it was just not classy of them. They should have definitely taken that out. I mean, they didn't offer that same treatment to any other quarterbacks' families that I know of for any bowl games. I've never seen them show a quarterbacks' family as much as they did Bryant's family for our game. And, you know, I mean, at a certain extent, yes, they are a big factor. They had him, they helped him get to where he is today. However, there is an element of privacy. They're still there to enjoy their son play. They're still going through the emotions that any other parent is going through. You know, Kiara and I were privy to a lot more of their emotions because we actually got to speak to them a little bit. And I do think they're very kind people. They're very passionate people. They're very supportive of him and they feel everything he feels. So obviously if your child gets hurt, the mother, like as a mom, you're going to want to go and check on him. They needed to give her that privacy as a mother. Yeah, it was pretty slimy, mm -hmm. Sim simply put. But I mean, other people felt that way too. But I also think too, it's like you have a whole fan base. Why not show some other people, some other fans that came out to support the cats? I know I went to an alumni event before the game and I was talking to a woman who had a shiny hat and like a really cute outfit. And she was like, oh, I'm really hoping to get on TV. Well, nobody got on TV because all they were doing was showing <laughs> yeah. Brian's family. Like, 
it was fun for us in a way, but at the end of the day, it's like you have to show other people that came out to support just as much. You had other families, other fans, like give them some screen time as well. That's the fun part about going to a game is when people can spot you and and text you and say, oh, like we see you on TV. I thought it was fun at first, but then after a while, it's like, okay, how often are they really going to show us? Because it was quite a bit. Did you get any texts from any people who just like surprised you like, oh, I can't believe they actually were watching and reached out to me? Yeah, some coworkers. My coworker, John Michael, shout out to him. He texted <laughs> me and he was like, hey, I'm watching the game. I see you. But he watches a lot of college football anyway. He knew I was going okay. to the game. So he probably thought like, oh, let me just see how the team does. And then ended up seeing me on TV. I know our old boss <laughs> texted us yeah. as well from equipment. and. I got a couple others, just people who I went to school with before, some friends, their family members were sending me pictures as well. So it was a lot of fun. The good thing though is that, like I said, we at least they at least caught Bryant's family in some celebratory moments. So it wasn't all bad. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good thing. I mean, it shouldn't have all been bad. So I'm really, really happy for them though. And honestly, the team did amazing. Brian ended up winning MVP of the game. He sure did. <laughs> and I honestly, as I said before, I do think it was well-deserved. He did play his heart out, even got up from what looked like serious injuries to continue and finish out the game, which the ending of the game to me was a little bit odd. It seemed like mm-hmm. very slow, but it was because it was right after a very big hit on Bryant as well and I think everybody was just kind of feeling it like the game needed to end when it ended and I'm glad it did it was a little um anticlimactic at the end for sure yeah but I was really happy for them I'm really glad that they got a lot of good words in especially from the new head coach and I did want to give flowers though and ask you as well if you could name Another MVP, let's say in addition to Bryant, who would it be? None other than the one, the only Jaheim Joseph. I hope we're on the same page. My (laughs) brother, right? My brother? Yes. Jaheim played his heart out. And all of those interceptions, I mean, come on. He was tracking that ball like nobody's business. He was on his A game that night. And... If I could have named one, I think it would have been him. So I definitely wanted to give him his flowers because he deserves it. He played like nobody else, and it really made the game so fun and so exciting. Yeah. Did I'm- we do much with the positions that we were in? No, but <laughs> we came back. The team came back, and he did it. Also, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, seriously, like it was like defensive, like I lost my voice. It's still coming back. Like we got back from Vegas literally this week on Sunday. And my dad was like, how could you have lost your voice? Nothing happened in that game. And I was like, the defense played out of their minds. Are you kidding me? Like I was screaming like I my voice by the time the game arrived, was gone. 100%. Lena can testify to it. And yet still, I used whatever little shred of volume that I could squeeze out of these vocal cords to cheer for the defense. It was absolutely insane watching like all the sacks, all the turnovers. They played so good. Like crazy, crazy good. Flowers to the entire defense. They were amazing entire defense. You are so right because every time they stepped on that field, they weren't there for long and they did exactly what they were supposed to do. Wow. It left me speak it did leave me speechless. I was very it excited. It literally to see left me speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so so shout out to them. Shout out to Cam Johnson, of course, and Bryce Kurtz for getting the two touchdowns. That last touchdown from Bryce was just beautiful. That catch so the throw, amazing. So you already know I'm not going to go into detail on you guys. You know, you you did what you needed to do. You stepped out. So congratulations. And also Cam, because he's from Nashville, I hear. So you hear he's from repping Nashville? Our, repping our hometown. Is there a, like, what's the nickname that you guys use for Nashville? A 615. The 615? Okay. So yeah. shout out I mean, Cam there's, for repping 615. There's there's quite a few. I don't know what everybody calls it. I don't know if there's like another name that other people in the street use, but P615. 
people call it the 615 here. Anyway, okay, so that's during the game. Do you have anything else to add? I was just really proud to be a Northwestern fan. They were throwing t-shirts into the stands, and I caught one. It, like, ricocheted off someone's head and bounced into my I'm hands. I'm sorry. No, so. no, 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 no. I pushed it. It, like, I you- slapped it over. <laughs> I redirected. You're welcome. Okay, <laughs> just be off up. Thank you, Lena, for the t-shirt. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh, and how could we forget this one? Okay, there was a moment... And this is prior to the game. This is the drama before the game. So I was talking to a lot of the equipment managers, tons of girls. There are six this year. I'm so happy that there are so many women in that field now because there has never been that many before. They're basically running the show. So shout out to them again, Gabby, Brooke, Erin, Jaden, so many others. I Emily, all of Shay, I know she wasn't at the game, but she's another one. You guys did amazing jobs just handling the program this year, making sure that everybody was together. Of course, you have the guys as well. And I'm sorry, I don't know your names, but y'all are great leaders. You're doing a great job this year. So I'm sad that they're losing some of you, but happy that a lot of you all are staying. But they were telling me that, at, what was it? I'm saying Folsom Field. I'm getting it wrong, but there was a a bowl Isn't event. Where Colorado plays. That's literally where Colorado plays. What am I doing? <laughs> so, so there was a bowl event where they all went. It was like on a street, and you have all the lights. It's on their Instagram. It's very beautiful. And both Wait, Fremont North, Street, Fremont maybe? Street, maybe yeah, so. Okay. I think so. So Northwestern and Utah players were all present. They had a spokesperson. I believe it's the guy who is the spokesperson for our game as well. And the bald guy. Yeah. The okay. I just I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So they were giving Utah all of this, these kudos. They were saying like, oh yeah, like you guys worked so hard. You you fought. You came all this way. Now you're here. You deserve it. You deserve to be here. And then they looked at Northwestern. They go, how are you here? How, how did you get here? Nobody was expecting you to be here. What did you do? Like, so Obviously, they were just crapping on Northwestern. They were crapping on Northwestern the entire time that we were there. And I don't understand why they would do it, what they had against our program. I mean, obviously, our first episode, right? We spoke about the topic of what went on this past summer and everything that had come out from the past. But it doesn't mean that you have to I guess, give bad graces to the guys who are currently there, who are there to play a sport. So I'm really, really happy that the guys pulled through, that our team won, that they got a ring, that they kind of showed them what's up because so many people, for whatever reason, had this chip on their shoulder about us, thought that the team wasn't going to do anything, that nobody was going to pull through, that no plays were going to be made, no games were going to be won, that we would just be another losing program. and. I don't know. I think if anyone deserved it this year, it really was them because they went through the trenches to get where they are. But it's not like they didn't deserve it or they didn't have a chance. Yeah, they didn't want to see us win, but we did anyway. Mm -hmm. So that bald man can sleep peacefully at night knowing that he gave us more bulletin board material. I'm sure those guys took it to heart. I mean, I know... They athletes like to say like, oh, I already played my heart out 100% no matter what. It doesn't matter what people say. But I mean, they're human beings too. So I'm sure that made an impact. Right. And it had to have. So I'm glad that they they pulled it together. I guess. Okay. End of my rant. We're moving on. (laughs) What's our next topic? Moving on. But let's talk about just in honor of the defense performing so well. Can we talk about the your guy? your coach, who can now shepherd that defense going forward? Okay, so there were a lot of changes that happened after the game. What Kiara is referring to is the staff changes. So sadly, we are seeing some people leave. Mike Bajakian, I'm not going to say what I wrote next to his name in our notes, but... (laughs) Jake, very kind guy. Offensive coordinator... But you just didn't make a lot of great calls, sir. I mean, fourth and one yard at the goal line, and you're going to make a pass play? 
Hmm. It was very frustrating to watch that game. The like it the was. kicker for me was when Ben got hurt and then he brings in Holinsky cold off the bench and then he has him throwing more than he had Ben Bryant throwing. That I yeah. I couldn't. It was unfathomable to me. No, it was but, like um, run play, run play, run play, <laughs> then gets hurt. Okay, now mm, you go ahead and throw. Wild. <laughs> Wild. But he will be, I don't know, moving on to greener pastures or retirement. I don't know how old he is. But it, it it just like at some point during the game, which obviously we didn't get to see till after the fact, they mentioned the fact that I think they said that Bajakian expected this to be his final game, or maybe he like said flat out that it was. He didn't coach like someone who was coaching their final game. Like if I was him, I would have been pulling out all the trick plays. Like you wouldn't have known what was coming for me. Like I would have gone all out like really to try to make sure that this game was creatively coached, that we saw things that we had never seen before because I would be like at least trying to serve my own interests, not just trying to win for the players, but trying to get myself a new job. Right. And he just he just didn't do that. He so. looked like he had food on the table the way he was playing. Like he wasn't hungry. No, he didn't I want tweeted that he like he coached like he had job security, and he did not. Yes. No, so. you looked at me and said that there was a point where Kiara looked at me and it was like, it looks like he's trying to lose. Like it really <laughs> looks like he's trying to like mess up. And like there were some calls that were questionable. There were. So, so yeah, I, I really didn't appreciate that one. But anyway, moving He's on. Gone. Moving on to better. Hopefully, we get a good OC. I'm tired. I need – there have been so many years where our defense has been flawless, top-ranked, beautiful. Love our defense. I was a defense girly because I was always paired – with my position, my position coaches were always on defense. Um, I had linebackers mm-hmm. and I just really want the offense to step up and like match that energy that the defense has been giving for so many years because I want to see shootouts. Me too. I want Shador to transfer to Northwestern. That's what I need. I want to see him. I want to see Mikey. I want to see freaking who, who's the, the other Travis Hunter. Travis I want to see all of them in purple. Are you kidding me? I just want to see them play our team. I want to know what that would look like. Okay. I can't daydream this anymore. We have no. to move forward because I'm really excited to announce this next one. As I said, I was a linebacker's assistant when I was my when I was why can I talk today? I'm just so I'm so caught up. Okay. I helped linebackers when I was at Northwestern. They were my group. And moving forward. Coach McGargle is now going to be the DC for Northwestern. So congratulations to McGargle. I'm super excited for him. Such a great guy. So passionate. So fun. Before every practice, he would jog around the field. Like, I don't even know how many times. I, I kind of lost count. I think it was like 20 or something. He's kind of crazy. So when I first started, I would actually run with him and – that's kind of how I earned his respect and the other linebackers' respect as well. So he's been my coach for a really long time. He was always very kind to me, which was surprising to a lot of people because I was on top of my game, I guess. And I don't know. I just love it. I miss it. I miss being with him at practice. I think he was so fun, and it was so nice to see him engage with everyone. And I think he's exactly what we need for defensive coordinator as well, because he knows those guys so well and he wants what's best for them. Did you know that coach McGargle, should I call him coach McGargle? Tim, did you know that Tim holds an FBS record? I did not. He does. He holds the records for, I believe most tackles in a career. Wow. Of anybody in the FBS. That's an insane record. That is. So see, more power to him. Great guy. I love Tim McArkle. So I'm really looking forward to this next season again because I really want to see how he does. I know that he has a long legacy of really great defensive coordinators behind him, but I know he's ready for it. He's more than capable. Not the one who was there before him not i'm not referring to coach rod i mean the the dc who was there before him um jim o'neill 
was yeah. was maybe like we just skipped we'll skip the legacy of great dcs with him we'll, uh, i'm talking that, about yeah Hinkos. Hinkos. yeah he continues that that legacy <laughs> yes. is very that important legacy. yeah so we're, we're <laughs> back we're back on track we're back on track we also have a wait or an athletic point what is this coach Hoot. yeah uh was he st- sports performance director of sports, sports performance, performance. He the the head like football like weight coach strength coach is gone. Nothing much to add there, uh, other than you know happy trails, and I hope he finds a new opportunity for him. Also leaving is Coach Jenick, the special teams <laughs> coach, and I told Lena that I have a story about Coach Jeff Jenick. I really want to hear it, so let's get to it. Yeah, we actually have a, a line in our script called <laughs> Surviving Surviving Jeff Jenick. Uh it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But here it is. So Northwestern obviously has had some success in the past. Like we've gone to some bowl games. And so this happened in 2018 at the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. And like Vegas, you go and you expect it to be warm and sunny and it wasn't for some reason. So it rained in Vegas when we were there and it also rained in San Diego, which again, you never expect it to, but that's fine. I being the good student equipment manager that I was came prepared and I brought my rain jacket outside and before the game, you know, it was not quite raining yet, but I could see that it was in the forecast by just looking out And so I put my jacket on the bench by D-Line, where I usually worked. And so it starts to rain, and I go for my jacket. And I'm like, where is it? And who is wearing it? My jacket, my name inside of it, none other than Jeff Jenick, took my jacket while it was raining and put it on. Did he know? He knew it wasn't his. (laughs) Well, what did she do? I didn't do anything, Lena. I stood, I stood out in the rain. Like, what was I supposed to do? Tell him to give you back your jacket. And no, give him I his know. Jacket? No, like I just like this was like I did not have like major Tad energy at the time. I was very like demure, and so I thought, okay, you know, it's a coach. I have to just like let him have. Eventually, he took it off because it stopped raining. But I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I. He he's wearing my jacket and he is a full time coach. I am a mere student, so I have to stand out in the rain in favor of him. Okay, every coach <laughs> has. I was also listen. I did coaches. <laughs> I did coach. I did the coaches' clothing and everything. Every coach has a rain jacket. They have a full suit, pants, jacket. Okay, they get hats, they get gloves, they get everything they could ever need. They they also get underwear. I had to pack their underwear for games as well. Okay, so it's mm. like. When you're no, I actually didn't have to pack their underwear. They, they no. it, everything's on a ring. I, but this is just to make a point, okay? They have a jacket. It's in their storage. It's in their trunk. All you had to do was grab his jacket, let him see the fact that he had yours, and you're like, here, Coach Jenick. Here's the jacket. This one's yours. You see your name. It's heat pressed inside, very prettily for you, and just switch. No, okay, so this is pregame. This is like during specialists. Like it's raining, their balls flying everywhere. Pause. And so I didn't necessarily have the time to just run back inside into the locker room and grab his jacket. For it. Could you imagine what Eric would say if I left specialists and ran back inside and was like, Coach Jenick has my jacket, so that's why I'm back in here to grab his stuff. And it wasn't like he didn't have it on for that long anyway. He just had it on long enough for me to be annoyed by the fact that this man took a jacket that he obviously knew was not his and put it on. Not even thinking like, hey, it's raining. Maybe the person who put it here would want to wear it. Yeah, I demand my, an apology. My hands were tied. I demand an apology. We're naming this episode Sur- Surviving Jeff Jenick. And I want, Sur- him, <laughs> I want it written. I want it written. And I want an, a video as well. So, Jenna, yes. if you're listening to this, get on it. Maybe he has a cameo. Maybe so. <laughs> Either way, we need a formal apology, and I want you to send her a brand new rain, ja- rain jacket. Where do you want it from? Hermes? Prada? Not Prada. Yeah, I want a brand new Hermes 
rain jacket. That's Coach Janik. Come on. I'm not right. asking. I'm demanding. This is compensation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that. Moving on. Yeah, this guy on. needs to. But all is well. I've I've moved on. I've forgiven him. All is well. I do still want my Hermes jacket, but other than that, I have mostly moved past this. Well, that's good. I just <laughs> I hate that for you. There are so many stories that I could tell about rainy days and football, but one of the craziest days ever of being a student manager. We were playing Minnesota, and Lena, I'm telling you. That, and that was why I believe in one of our bad seasons. It rained, it snowed, it sleeted, and it hailed all in the span of one game. I remember like peeling off rain gear to just throw it in the dryer in the equipment room just to like try to dry it out. But it was just, oh, it was such a miserable game. But to me, I'm like very tolerant of cold weather generally. And now even more so just because of all of the elements that we've had to brave Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's wild I've never had a game with all the elements like that it was crazy it was wild my least favorite games are snow and rain games because there's just nothing you can do to hide from it I remember like I would have the towel you know you guys taught me how to do the towel you wrap a towel around your head and you put your rain jacket over it and then it just kind of keep gives you a little bit more of a brim and it keeps you warm and dry yeah. as well. I would just stand by the heater on the sideline as much as I possibly could. But you can't because if you're doing boards or if you're, you know, running to do equipment and help people with their headphones, whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. it's just you don't have time to really sit and, and wait by the heater. So honestly, I during my first year, I used to sit on the heated benches. Like I really didn't care. They told us Which we couldn't. It- I, I know, like, what was, I mean, Lena, you have to understand, I was looking back at photos, my first year, we had five managers. So they weren't in a position to be, like, making demands, getting rid of people, punishing people. We did not have enough bodies. So, yeah, if it was cold, I was going to sit on that bench. And literally, like, they were not going to be able to replace me with anybody. I guess they didn't. They didn't. <laughs> they they literally. For a long time. They couldn't. We started with six, lost Eddie, and then (laughs) even just like there were some road games where we didn't have all five managers too. It was it was rough. That does sound rough. We made it. Now you guys, now they have like an embarrassment of riches. They have so many people. They have so many excellent women there. It's not fair. It's really not. I need to be part of it. I needed more friends, like because for <laughs> there were times in equipment where it was literally just me as a girl, or like probably just you. You know, I'm sure you like went through it, where it's or you and just one other girl, and it's like I don't know the whole COVID season. It was me. Yeah, it's not as fun for you. That wasn't fun. But I mean, I was basically came. like alone as a girl anyway, because uh, other female managers did not very much like me. <laughs> I don't get it. You and I clicked immediately. Right? I don't know. I don't think it was me. I, I you know, I'll stop. <laughs> I was so, I was so sad when you left and it, I only got you for a season. That's it. Yeah. Guys, literally three months. That was it. That was it. And then I was gone and didn't see her until last week. It's insane. Okay. Moving on again, post-game celebratory antics. What did you, well, I, I when you work hard and you win, you play hard. Mm. That is very so true. So we were out in Vegas. And obviously, like, you're going to have opportunities to celebrate. The thing that I was most happy about is that there were, like, 21-plus options. During my last bowl game, we had to go to this, like, 18-plus club because there weren't people who were old enough to do the adult ones. So it just wasn't as, like... I don't know. An 18 plus club, it's like sectioned off. They have drinks here. You can't bring this there because you're not old enough to be. We actually got to go to like 21 plus places. One of them was like kind of a flop. We went to Dre's after hours. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of different than regular Dre's, which is a nightclub in Vegas. And we got in there. Lena, how much did we pay? How do, I, do I have to tell everybody? It was forty dollars. It was forty dollars. I wouldn't pay four dollars to get in there. I mean, it was completely dead. 
completely I don't, dead. I, I thought we just maybe because it's like an after hours club, which I had never heard of. An, I don't know, but I had never heard of an after hours club. I just figured mm-hmm. it was a nightclub. We got there. At, did we get there after midnight? We got there after midnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got there at one o'clock. One o'clock in the morning. On a Saturday, Saturday night, night in Las Vegas. And it was completely empty. How does it that make sense? sense? And one of the guys I met there, he was from Arizona, but frequented Vegas. And he was telling me that, oh, well, it picks up at 3 a.m. usually. Like, usually people come out. It should be packed. Like, it's not usually like this. Well, he messaged me later and he was like, good thing you left. It was still dead at 3 a.m. I was like, I he thought He stayed there for another two hours? I don't know why, but yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, we told him where we were going. I he know. He could have... He could have tagged. I mean, and it was free to get in. It was free. So where we ended up going was the Marquee and the Cosmopolitan. And that was actually a lot better. Honestly, we should have gone there first anyway. I don't it know why. Yeah. Dancing, good music. I didn't get any drinks at the Marquee myself. That None that were tasty, at least. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would like suggested if you really want some place big because it was a small dance floor very but tiny it was nice i mean it ha- it was dark it had a good mood like i said like good lighting it had this weird thing though where it sprayed water on the dance floor every now and then yeah. so if you're not it was kind of that, jarring yeah actually if you don't know it's coming it really does surprise you so other than that though had a great time there i think the group made it better but other than that I don't think Vegas has great nightlife. I'm going to just say it. Like, this is a hot take. This is a very hot take. This is a very big hot take. I think if you're going for an event, such as a concert somewhere or somebody's throwing a party, then that's fine. The thing about Vegas is that it, it heightens your expectations. There are promoters on every corner. Of course, Mm -hmm. a lot of them are promoting strip clubs, which nobody wants to go to. So many, yeah. But there are some that were like, oh, go to Bruno Mars's after party. Go to this person's <laughs> after party. Yeah. And I asked them, I said, okay, is Bruno going to be there? They're like, no, maybe his band, but Bruno usually doesn't. And I'm like, why am I going to his after party if it's not his after party? It's just a party that y'all are throwing and trying to get people to go to. Oddly enough, when we were at Dre's, or Dre's after hours, I found out from the other people that we met there that they actually got promoter tickets to get in for free. So I'm wondering why did we have to pay $40, but they got promoter, a promoter guy to give them a free ticket at the door. And then there is still nobody down there. Like to me, the logic just doesn't click. And then obviously nobody's there. So these promoters are trying to work overtime and not getting people at all. And honestly, for the holiday season, the casinos were very dead. So I just feel like it's a city on decline. Wow. You know what? The the real gag is how they create the illusion of like excitement. So we're there on this long line waiting to get into this nightclub that was empty. Empty. Like w- like they want people to see, oh my gosh, like Dre's after hours is popping because like there are all these people trying to get in. Lo and behold, we get downstairs inside. And again, we arrived in a group of three after midnight. Like, we were there at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. And by the time we got in, it was empty. The, like, half the other people who were there of, like, I don't know, 15 people were other people from Northwestern. Yeah. (laughs) And we had to wait on a line to get in. There was nothing. So I agree with you. The illusion was horrendous. And it actually made me feel cheated. The marquee was so much better. Yeah, I did. She got 40 bucks. Yeah. So much better. The only pet peeve I had about the marquee is that there was a point in time where my feet were like uh, sticking to the ground. Like I could not even walk because the alcohol that had spilled so much, like it was like my feet were glued to the ground. And obviously really? that's that's just going to happen at bars and nightclubs period. But it just whatever floor situation they've got here is not optimized for alcohol spilling. It was very uncomfortable. And I was wearing sneakers, so I can only imagine a girl who's out there wearing heels, she's got her toes out, like, basically being glued to the floor all night. Yeah, that would be really bad. I didn't feel that. I don't know why. Maybe my boots just didn't 
tack the same way. I don't know. I've just got tacky sneakers is all. Yeah. <laughs> also, the marquee was not free. The only reason why we got in was because one of the, like, the person who led the group that we were in had those promoter tickets. Like, he was on FaceTime with the promoter saying, like, how many people. Do you remember when we were online and he was, like, counting random people who were, like, not even part of our group in the eight yeah. that we were in? Yeah. Yeah, that's because of the promoter. Oh, actually. Yeah. Otherwise, well, we would have had to pay. I, did, I had so, no idea. <laughs> thank, I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm forgetting his name, but thank you to thank the you person so much. who did that. Yeah. I, wow. Okay. I probably should figure out who that was. <laughs> so <laughs> we should. Anyway, our, our after the game party situation, it was a lot of fun. Had a good time. Got to catch up with some people that I personally hadn't seen in a while because they were mostly guys that came in the program or were there. Well, I was in school. So I don't know. I had a good time. It was nice to like catch up again. I had not been back to Northwestern to see a game and like Kiara who went to see the Penn State game at Ryan Field. So I don't know. I think it kind of opened up the door for me before I was very much so like I'm not going back to Chicago. I don't really care that much. Like I will watch them on TV. But now I think I would definitely go back to Chicago to see a game in the future, but only if you're with me again, because <laughs> I will be there. Girly. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> it's fun. We just need them to travel abroad again. If they can go to Ireland or I don't know, imagine they could go to the Hawaii bowl. I know that's not a big 10 bowl, but the Hawaii bowl, Bahamas bowl, that would be 10 out of 10. Beautiful. We'd be beautiful. So be there. I definitely would. And I hope that they do it. If they could, if they would do it next year, that would be great. While we still people <laughs> can get the family tickets. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I don't. I mean, I'm. I just have to rely on you because I literally do not know a single player there after this year. I barely even know the guys there now. I'm. I'm. I might know one. I don't know. I'd have Maybe. to look at the roster. <laughs> I really <laughs> would. Who's gonna stay? Who's gonna leave? I don't know. So we'll see. Okay, I guess we can move on. That was our fourth topic. But all in all, like, how would you rate your your Vegas experience? Like, including the game, the food, the night scene, everything. Everything, I would say 9 out of 10. There were some 9 out of 10? Okay, good. The, the nightclub scene, the, that's what deducts points for me. Anything else, I would say they give you such big portions of food. Oh, the costs. It, okay, everything costs a lot, too. So maybe 8 out of 10. But... The portions are big. That's what I really appreciate. Because if you're going to pay a lot, give me a lot. The food was great. The people were great. I didn't have any issues. Our hotel room, the beds were so comfortable. So okay. soft. Like, Lena, your mom couldn't stop raving about that bed. I couldn't stop raving about those beds. They were, like, some of the most comfortable, comfortable beds, beds I've ever slept in my entire oh. life. It was so nice. The, the rest I got there was beautiful beautiful after the first night because I was just up for whatever reason the first night but after that I was sleeping like a baby it was so good so shout out to Mandalay Bay if you ever go to Vegas stay there or at the Delano because they have such great setups for their rooms beautiful beds they take really good care of it and it just felt like luxury to me it did feel luxurious like the, especially the the size of the room like we paid what a hundred bucks a night 86 Rough, oh 86 dollars we made 86 dollars a night and that was one of the bigger hotel rooms i'd ever been in because yeah. you've got a section like a huge section where you're sleeping in and then the bathroom is really really big full-size bathtub and then there's mm -hmm. a special a separate section where like the toilet's off so it was a really nice room personally like i don't know that like if Mandalay Bay was higher up on the strip for those who have been to Las Vegas, it's very at the very bottom, basically. And it's the strip is very, very, very long. If it was like in the middle, I'd be more inclined to stay there again. The fact that it was so far down and anytime you wanted to walk somewhere, you had to walk through like it felt like miles of hotels to get to anything else it was, to me yeah. was like a was frustrating and I didn't know that because I had never been there before like there were so many times we were walking it felt like we were walking for like an hour definitely and yet we would walk from Mandalay Bay 
to the Luxor, to Excalibur, to New York, New York, and then like just barely get to the Aria Hotel. Yeah. And it's like, gosh, we're still at the bottom. <laughs> like we're nowhere close to the Cosmopolitan. Like after we went out to the game, we tried to walk back from the Marquee to the Mandalay Bay. It was going to be like an hour. Wa- it was a ridiculously long walk. Yeah. So yeah. I would say somewhere that's maybe a little more central, like maybe the Bellagio, which has that beautiful fountain, or like even MGM Grand, because they also have a nightclub in there that's apparently very good. Maybe true. there. True, true. Yeah. I guess if you're going to Vegas for Vegas, definitely stay middle. I liked where we stayed because it just so happened the team stayed at the adjoining hotel. So at least. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> we got to see because, like, I was also also partially there for Jaden, another girl who's an equipment manager now who's graduating. So it was nice to be able to see her without having to like make a special plan to try to travel mm-hmm. to the hotel to see her. And then it's right across the street from Allegiant, so it worked out really nicely. Yeah, I think for Super future convenient. bowl games for anybody who's listening who might have you know be in college or be playing football or have family that's going to a bowl game if it's in vegas definitely stay at mandalay yeah allegiant is literally across the street right across the street and it was so and, easy to get to and from the game yeah no and Ubers also, like, required across the street in vegas terms does mean you're going to be like walking for 15 minutes because <laughs> that's yeah. just everything well, is so big <laughs> let's say this it was across the bridge like it really was easy to get to and we didn't have to worry about traffic or being stopped or any of that so that was a really great thing um and i really did appreciate where we stayed then but like you said if i was staying for vegas in and of itself i would definitely stay somewhere else Mm-hmm. Other than that, did you yeah. have a do you have a favorite hotel that you visited? I thought the the holiday decorations in the Aria were really nice, and the Wynn had really beautiful decorations. Really, I don't think I went to the Wynn. You might have gone there without me that day. That was my final day, and we oh my gosh, Lena, I didn't tell you this. We got there because we wanted to go to the buffet. Mm-hmm. They told us that it was a this was on the Sunday that we were leaving. A three hour wait. <gasps> No. Three hours. I was like, why would anybody? And there were people online. Why would someone stand online for three hours for food? It was ridiculous. I guess if they really wanted it. I mean, yeah, it's all you can eat. But it just, (sighs) I was so annoyed because like, that's like part of the classic Vegas experiences, the Vegas buffets. And like, you can make reservations in advance. My mom and I did not realize that that would have been necessary. But apparently, like, if you ever go back, the Wynn and has a great buffet and Caesar's Bacchanal buffet is apparently very highly rated. Oh, okay. But I got to hit those next time. But yeah, the the Wynn was beautiful inside and the Aria was beautiful as well. Mm-hmm. The thing I have to say, and it's such a niche thought, so don't pay attention to me if you feel like I'm weird, but every hotel had a smell. And yes. <laughs> And some of them were beautiful. I honestly, I have to say, I love the Cosmopolitan because it smelled like a Tom Ford store. And very I would go there simply because of the smell. The decorations were beautiful. It was very modern, chic, like billionaire boyfriend esque. Everything's like dark tile mirrors, <laughs> crystals. You know, it gave like a certain ambiance. So I think. If I ever have a bachelorette party and for whatever reason I want to go to Vegas, I'm bringing everyone to the Cosmo or the Bellagio. It was really, it was the Cosmopolitan was really nice. It was like really slick. I liked it. And I think best smelling hotel, Luxor was the worst smelling one. It just smelled like fast food. It smelled like fish to me for whatever reason. It was that Johnny Rocket inside. It was horrible. It was. The Delano, though, there was like that. Like walkway that next to the construction between the Delano and Mandalay Bay that smelled so, so good. good. And it always, I don't even know what that was. Like I didn't see where they were spraying anything. It just it, ten out of ten. Highly recommend if you go to Vegas, <laughs> you make sure you stop by the Delano to smell it. Smell it definitely, definitely. But yeah, that's that's about it. Other than that, I really enjoyed going and shopping. I mean, we went to all of the luxury stores. We went to Killian. I got perfume. It was such an experience. Does it smell better than the Cosmopolitan? 
Yeah, it does, actually. I it really does. love it. I really do love it. So they had the perfume bar at Killian for anybody that wants to try it out. It's expensive. It is. But the perfume we bar itself is free. Taste. But we do have expensive taste. They give you samples, yes. samplings of all of the perfumes <laughs> in their collection. They'll spray you with some. They'll show you their products, if, especially if they have new products. Um, I bought a small bottle of I, – I even forgot the name of it at this point. Oh, my gosh. Let me see. Because you forgot the name? I how could I? Because I'm thinking of the wrong one. I'm thinking of the one that Rihanna usually gets. I got the one that was Beyonce it. Gets. Angel Did you get the Cher. hair one? Angel Share. Angel Share. Angel Share. It and smells it so such good. Such a beautiful scent. It's from their. It's like their liqueur line or something like that. But it's based on all of the, like liqueurs and al- alcohols or something like that. But it smells like. I don't even know how to describe it, really. I say on on a level of like Baccarat, Baccarat Rouge, the one that you, the candle that you got me, Baccarat's always mm-hmm. going to be my favorite. But Angel Share is one where I'm usually not a fan of perfume enough to be inspired to buy something. And this one, I would definitely get a full size bottle in the future. I feel like is it floral or like it's more woodsy, of like woodsy. a not woodsy, but it's more of like a like a spicy scent. And spicy, okay, yeah, and it just kind of smells like elegance in a bottle. It's the best way I can bottle. It's the best way I can describe it. So definitely go to Killian if you can. If you have a store near you, give it a try. See how you like it because I honestly I do love it, and I know that the one that Rihanna gets, I forgot the name of that one. I'm terrible, aren't I? But it's really, really good. I believe it's one of their most popular scents as well because. Anybody who's been on Twitter knows that Rihanna smells amazing. Um, and people <laughs> always rave that. about it. So as we were walking through those shops, though, I did have a celebrity run in. You did? Yeah. I guess you technically did, too. Didn't we all? Our whole family got let through I the door. I didn't even realize who it was until, like, I actually recognized him from the back when he was walking away. I didn't realize who he was until someone acknowledged that we had seen someone oh really those people yeah i didn't realize that like he you you go ahead and explain okay so (laughs) kiara and i were perusing through hermes because she wanted a belt and our parents were very hungry so we decided okay our moms are ready let's go we're gonna go eat so we leave the hermes store i'm walking through the door behind a group of guys men and they I guess didn't see us or something had happened. So there's two guys in front, one guy behind. I'm behind the guy that's in the back. He gets through the door finally and just doesn't hold the door. But one of the guys in front of him turns around, sees that he's about to let the door shut in my face and reaches back around his friend to like hold it open. All of a sudden I look up, I say, oh, thank you so much because I was reaching out to catch the door. So the other guy, another guy in the group comes and opens up the second one. It's like double doors to open for the rest of our group. I look over at the guy who's holding my door and I'm like, huh. I look at him like that. I literally go, hmm. I said, thank you so much. And I keep walking through. Everybody else follows. It's my mom, you, your mom. And then I look at you guys and I'm like, isn't that a celebrity? Because I'm terrible with celebrity names. But I knew he was one. I didn't really have to ask, but I just wanted to know who he was. So everybody kind of looks back and was it you? Was it my mom? But somebody in our group goes, I think it was your mom. My mom, my mom goes, oh, I think that's Mark Wahlberg. I was like, (laughs) oh yeah. (laughs) And it was. So then finally, everybody's like kind of walking out. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess so. They start, they are walking away, going, minding their business. You know, he was like, yeah, of course you're welcome. Continues on. And then another couple walks by their group and they both turn around and they're like, wait. Yeah. And so my mom <laughs> looks at them and she's like, do you think that's, and they're like, yeah, I think that's Mark Wahlberg. And we're like, okay, cool. <laughs> so Mark Wahlberg held the door open for us in Vegas. So thank you, Mark. You saved He's very faces. kind. He really He is. must spend a ton of time out there because he has so many restaurants there. Walburgers. Really? Wow. Which I didn't we should have like, we should have wanted to one and we Probably. didn't. <laughs> I just, 
his fashion was really great. He had a green hat, some matching kind of green shoes, some like really comfortable maybe khaki pants, I think, and like a uh like sweatshirt. But my mom yeah, complimented yeah, it quite a bit. She was like, Wow, I really love the green. The green was beautiful. His fashion was nice. He looked pretty and well that's put like together. That's his the brand color that he is like a bright green. Bright green, yeah. For Wahlburgers. He's very tiny. He very, very is. tiny. He is. He's not your six foot king, but he's definitely he's, a gentleman. He's a short king, but we love a short king. We do. We do. Not, so not for was, me, but we do love a short king. We do. And it was very it was very fun to see him and just feel like wow, he's kind of a normal person that would just recognize the fact that, you know, I should hold the door open for people who are walking behind our group or, you know, just be very kind. He was a normal person. But again, he's he a, a regular schmegular <laughs> guy. He, I feel like he was really great and really nice. The guy at Killian was so nice. He was so patient with us. He was like dowsing us in all these different beautiful, expensive perfumes. Yes. And the people at Dior, we went to Christian Dior. Christian Dior. Please forgive me <laughs> if I'm botching that. And the, Lena, the people there loved you. Like they treated you like a little Barbie doll. They had so they much did. fun dressing you up. They did. And they were so kind. They were. And they they were so friendly. Like when I was back in the dressing room, they were like, do you need anything? Can we get you anything? They offered you drinks as well. Just they the never brought out the water. But they yeah, they never it. did, did they? <laughs> I should have, you should have said something. Hmm. And it's okay. But I know that they would have done it. Maybe if I hadn't been so, <laughs> I don't know. I was trying on a lot of stuff. And it was, was like the most beautiful winter wear you've ever seen in your life. Yes, those ski pants. Mm, I wish they had my Just size. Stunning, stunning. But the ones that you had on, they they fit you. They didn't. I needed one size bigger. Oh, okay. And one the, size the lady was explaining that like they make like one of each size yeah. in the entire world. And so I have to wait until next year's lineup because I even went online to try to find them. They're not there. Where she said that they were going, they were in um, another location. I forgot where, but one place Did in the United Aspen? States and some place in, I think so. Yeah, it might have been Aspen, and then the other one was someplace in Europe. And I couldn't find it. So maybe it was like a store exclusive. If I had asked her to buy it, maybe I could have gotten them. I don't know, but it just it was it was too far gone i couldn't and it wasn't it wasn't the right color i had the gold ones on there was another color that was released that was red and blue lining oh i think i did see those on yeah and i did not want that one so the gold ones were they were perfect maybe we'll insert an image of it yeah or we'll post it we'll see we'll we'll see what we can do to get you guys to That's see so nice but if you are listening to this and you feel like giving us a late christmas gift and want to drop a couple grand on Lena, please go to the Christian Dior in the Crystal Malls in Las Vegas and buy the white ski pants. Please do. Or just the ski jacket. I'll take the I'll take the coat, the puffer coat. Yes, the jacket was so nice. So, so nice. So I'm not picky. Whatever you want, <laughs> I'll take. Whatever you want. As the long one as it's place, not from Prada. <laughs> yeah, and I can't do Prada. I guess. Let's end the pod after this because we are getting close to an hour. But I just have to say Prada, they're You're so dead classist. To me. Yeah, no, they're dead to me. They will follow you around. Of course, Kiara and I were dressed very casual this day. We were just walking around with our moms, you know, having a time shopping, whatever, looking at everything. And the people in Prada, they almost just like follow you if they feel like you're not one of them, one of the upper class or have money or are well to do. Um, mm-hmm. Other places, they'll actually assign you with one of their workers to say like, hey, you're with this person today. You're with Claudia today. She's going to help you shop. She's going to look around, you answer any of your questions. And they're always very respectful and very kind. And I understand having that at a luxury store. What I don't understand is how you can have Prada where people walk in freely and then not everyone is getting assigned to a person. And then they follow you around and make you feel like you're looking at the wrong stuff. Kiara and I were looking at men's shoes just because we wanted to look at the designs. It was yeah. nothing like whatever. And then a worker comes up, Ugh, the women's stuff is actually upstairs. And then proceeds to follow us upstairs, but like keep up- a distance. 
follow us up this tiny little escalator to like and the store was empty there was no hiding the fact that she was following us no matter how much she kept her nose in her phone it was obvious what she was doing yeah and it's like i can see keeping a distance and letting people shop around and have a good time but like you're not there for us you're there because you want to keep an eye on us like obviously like you said she's on her phone she's not really she's trying to look very nonchalant at what she's doing but it's failing miserably they need new training if that's how every single product is because it makes your customers feel unwelcome and you don't always yeah. know what a person has when they're walking through your stores i'm no, never going you have to no dress idea. up and I'm not going to dress up in exclusive Prada and Christian Dior and any of these other high fa- high end fashion brands to go shopping at one of these malls because honestly, frankly, I don't care enough and it doesn't matter how much money I have. But I'll check it out again when I go when I actually do have a little something more to my name. Yeah, that's and right. And I'm going to see. I mean, I just think that like I wouldn't patronize that place because I don't want them to have my money. But a Christian Dior, a place that makes you feel like you're the center of attention, you're the center of the world while you're in their stores. That's who I want to shop with. I want to shop with somebody Mm -hmm. that makes me feel beautiful no matter what I come in wearing because I am beautiful. Even, yes, you are beautiful. You are too. Even Hermes was like, the sales associate, Lena, I'm telling you, if you want to buy a Birkin, she would have sold anything to you. She was so impressed by the fact that you were a pilot. She loved the fact that you spoke Chinese. Didn't she say there was another another sales associate that was was she a flight attendant Mm -hmm. on private jets but they were they were so nice in there too and like was were showing us the twillies showing us the leather the belts and there's just no reason like prada is not all that to be making people feel uncomfortable and unwelcome in their stores no even when we went to yves saint laurent they left us alone for the most part They were just like, okay, come in, have fun, go look around. Like we were looking at all the different clothes, all the different accessories. And like a person came by to say, hey, can I help you with anything? Kiara, no. I was, I said no. And then they just let us shop around. And when we didn't want anything, okay, bye. Have a great day. Thanks so much. You too. And the guy in the bodega, remember the hot guy in the bodega store? Oh my gosh. Leo. Leo. That was his name? Oh gosh. He was was so handsome. He was. He was we saw him beautiful. from afar, so we had to check it out. But he was very nice too. He was. He let you try on those those beautiful like melted heels. He, it's hard to describe. It's very They're hard like to little describe. Kitten it looked heels. like melted chocolate, but it also looked like just fabric folded up very daintily. Yes. But it was glossy, shiny, very pointy. I don't even know. Very narrow chocolate. too. Ah, <sighs> gosh, Vegas was dream. Vegas was a blast. Yes, I'd Vegas was a we dream. We do. And actually take a vacation for Vegas. Test it out. See if my opinion is wrong about the nightlife. Definitely try out some buffets this time. Get our reservations set. And yes. really just enjoy it as normal tourists, not crazed college football fan tourists. <laughs> so, Or both, if that's your, your kind of thing. Mm, nobody will be as special as the cats in Vegas, so. No. We'll see. But anyway, you can contact us by following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at ticket to go Pod, or by emailing us at TicketToGoPod.com. You can follow me, Lena, everywhere at Flying with Lena. Or if you want a better Instagram to follow, follow me at the Kiara Danielle on Instagram or on TikTok. No, she's not lying. It's a much better Instagram. No, thank it's not. So- Hers is much more visual. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in again. Sorry for our long hiatus, but now we're officially back. And we we're hope you tune in baby. again. <laughs> <laughs>